Coming up, we'll take a look at the student government on campus, and we'll also get to meet the running candidate for the Vice President of Media. Now, from the EMC studio at Onondaga Community College, this is On TV Update. Good morning and welcome to On TV Update. Today is Friday, April 5th. I'm Matthew Georgiatis. And I'm Catherine Samara. The Student Government Association is a group of students that helps others and looks to improve the OCC community. Find out about the current student government members and meet candidate Rebecca McLean, who's running for Vice President of Media. I want to be involved in the Student Government Association because I want to put my creativity and my leadership and communication skills to work in a way that will benefit the school, its students, and who I am as a person. My number one goal is to um, raise more involvement in the school. I do see some issues with um, current student involvement and low attendance to events, and I would love to um, see the attendance um, higher and to see more students want to be involved. The student government helps with programs like the Alive Mental Health Fair. The event featured some educational games and activities, as well as a raffle to raise awareness about depression and suicide. Some of the raffle prizes were provided by the SGA, like laser water bottles and laptop bags. Here at this graffiti board, people can write a positive message to encourage people as they walk by. The board will be hung up in the student government office for everyone to see. The Student Government Association also coordinates with clubs, plans programs and events, and helps students who come to their office with questions. The current student government resident, Brianna Churchio, tells us how the government decides on their programs. So the reason why we have this student government is because we're all students. We know other students. We can talk to them and find out what they're interested in. The student government is planning Party on the Quad for Monday, May 13th. It's a day to have some fun and take a break between classes. Last year's Party on the Quad had food, bounce houses, arts and crafts, and prizes. We told you about Suited for Careers Closet in Mawinney Hall. It's a program that allows students to borrow professional clothing from internships, job interviews, and to even be on camera. The hours for the program have changed. You can walk in and browse the closet Monday and Wednesdays from 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. or call for an appointment on Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays between 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Contact the Career Services Office on campus for more information. Starting your own business can be a challenge. I spoke with the co-owner of a local salon to find out what inspired her to open a business in Syracuse. The 120 Salon, located on 989 James Street in Syracuse, has been open now for five years. Co-owner Luann Kua explains what inspired her to want to open a business in the first place. Well, I wanted a job that gave me independence and the ability to be my own boss. After working for Corporate America, I was ready to call my own shots and this gives me the opportunity to do that. Luann has been in the hairdressing business for 36 years and says Syracuse is a great community to work in. A lot of her clients are local people who she's known for many years. Joanne Samara has been a client of Luann's from the very beginning. She's had a couple of salons. I love the 120 salon because there's free parking. It's so pleasant. Everyone is happy. It's just a great place to come. The salon offers more services than simply haircuts. They offer a wide variety of hair products and jewelry. They even do eyebrow waxing. If Luann is busy with a the client, there are eight other hairdressers that work at the 120 Salon. Luann says one of the best parts about owning a business in Syracuse is the connections she's made with people. The friends that I've met over the years who were total strangers in the beginning and now they know all about my life, I know all about their life, and every day is a day with friends. The salon is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 7, and on Saturdays from 8.30 to 5. Walk-ins are welcome. To learn more information on how you can start your own business, you can visit ny.gov backslash services backslash business. Coming up on On TV Update, we'll take a look at how Helping Hounds is giving dogs in the Syracuse area a second chance at a forever home, and how you can help them with their efforts. But next, spring is here and campus closed three times this past winter. After the break, we'll find out how the decision to close gets made. <laughs> 
You're watching On TV Update. My favorite class to teach is probably the writing scripts. I enjoy working with students on creative writing, and uh, though I enjoy all the classes that I teach, to be honest, there's an energy that creative endeavors like writing scripts allows you to have. That energy just kind of bubbles through the whole term, and so it makes it a lot of fun. I really enjoy the potential to work closer with students. Um, oftentimes, uh, we're fortunate enough to have small classes. Typically, we do a lot of class discussions. We do a lot of exercises that deal with student writing. Um, I try to get the students to interact with each other. But I think there's a, a pretty good balance between students working on the writing and sharing thoughts about writing. Yeah, I think OCC is a strong consideration for any student. on campus is a lot more convenient than living at home because everything I do is on campus so I can just easily go to places I need whether it be advising whether it be getting tutored everything's just like within just slight reach you get a lot of help here all of the professors I've ever had have been really really great really involved and guide you in the right direction on what you want to do and it also just lets me get into the whole community aspect of college that's really important is the Honor Society for two-year colleges. Well, I was first appointed by the president to be the Phi Theta Kappa advisor, and I think that I've stuck with it so long because I see that it really does make a difference in students' lives. Um, my role as a Phi Theta Kappa advisor gives me a unique opportunity to form close relationships with students and really see them grow. Come to OCC with an open mind. Come here, work hard, and make it happen. I knew I wanted to go to a community college just because it saves money. It's not like a high school classroom. My favorite part of my classes would be the hands-on experiences. You can go into a lab and watch it happen. It's not just ink blots on a page. It's in motion. The faculty is great. They really care about the students. The majority of my professors, they're very patient, fairly understanding. I would highly recommend OCC. I would say go for it. Welcome back to On TV Update, I'm Katherine Samara. It's starting to feel a lot more like spring here in Syracuse. And I'm Matthew Georgiatis. Let's go to Ezra Bell on weather to find out if spring is here to stay. Well, today's weather doesn't inspire any confidence in spring sticking around, but the outlook for this week does. According to AccuWeather.com, today's high is 43 degrees with a low of 40, and we have a mix of rain and snow. But things will start warming up tomorrow with a high of 57 and a low of 34 under partly cloudy skies. Taking a look at the week ahead, temperatures will continue to go up. Our warmest days on Sunday and Monday with a high of 65. But on Monday, we might see some rain. Then things are going to start cooling down into the low 50s as we go into days with less clouds and more snow. It's officially spring here in central New York, which means winter weather and snow days are starting to enter the rearview mirror. But while the chances of schools closing are melting away, let's take a look at how OCC makes the decision to close during the winter. According to weather.com, Syracuse is ranked fourth for cities with the most snow days. Public schools in the area can typically make up for the lost time, but OCC President Casey Craybill says that in higher education, it's not quite as easy. Colleges don't build a schedule that includes snow days simply because we're held to a different standard. Our classes, like a three credit class, um, to meet accreditation standards has to meet so many minutes. We don't build in snow days or teacher conference days or things like the K-12 system does. It's a difficult decision to make, but Craybill doesn't have to make it alone. A conference call of OCC administrators provides her with a recommendation based on how a closing would affect student safety and academics. Chief of Security David Wall says that the process is more art than science, but there are signs that'll lead to a closing. One is the predicted depth of the snow, so three to four inches and above. Uh, second is wind chill. And then the third is the wind itself, which creates blowing uh, conditions that could be hazardous to driving. Chief Wall and the committee get their weather reports from the National Weather Service. You can find their website at noaa.gov. Check the forecast for Syracuse 
and get a better idea if the college is going to close. Ensuring student safety is a priority, but President Craybill says that sometimes the decision to stay open is just as important because students have to learn how to drive in these conditions. When you leave us and go to work, there are no snow days. But when the campus does close, decisions go out by 5.30 via email, call, and text. Now, Chief Wall says sometimes students show up to campus after closings have been announced because they were simply out of the loop. To stay up to date about all OCC emergencies, including snow days, go to WebAdvisor and update your emergency contact info. It's the last weekend for the maple syrup celebration at Critz Farm in Casanova. There are wagon rides out to the sugar bush trees where you can see how the sap is collected and turned into syrup. Tours are from 9 to 3 on Saturday and Sunday. There's an all-you-can-eat breakfast buffet from 9 to 1 both days. Helping Hounds has been rescuing dogs in the Syracuse area since 2009. On TV Updates, Brendan McCall McCaslin gives us an inside look at what the staff and volunteers are doing to help the community and what you can do to help their initiatives. Helping Hounds has been a big name in the Syracuse area when it comes to families looking to adopt a dog. Last year we took in a little over 2,000 dogs. Um, 2018 we had uh, 1,749 adoptions. In 2017 we had 1,799 adoptions. Even volunteers like Kevin and Christine have done more than volunteer their time. They volunteered their home. I love dogs. I've had three other dogs prior to the two that I've adopted here. They're just good companions. My kids are all grown, so they're our babies. And yeah, they get spoiled and just kind of, you know, want to do some good in the community and help out the dogs that are less fortunate, I guess. Yeah, I had lost a dog a couple years earlier, and uh, I actually came in to just donate some dog food and uh, ended up leaving with a dog because the dog adopted me. And then a few years later, I ended up uh, with a second one that uh, just was the right thing to do, so now I have three. Helping Hounds is always looking for any sort of assistance that people can give them, whether it be anything from adopting the dog, volunteering their time, or even donating supplies such as dog food, treats, toys, or even leashes for little guys like Ringo here. Hi. From DeWitt, I'm Brendan McCasland okay. on TV Update. The Helping Hound staff are excited and will be preparing to move to their new, larger 9,000 square foot location at 7268 Caswell Avenue in Cicero. The new building is located about a mile from the Cicero DMV. The application for new volunteers will be on their website June 1st. Later, we'll take a look at how the Learning Center is a great place to help students improve in their learning skills. But first, the OCC men's lacrosse team has only lost six games prior to 2019. Coming up after the break, a former player has taken his talents to a local high school. You're watching on TV Update. Because we're a two-year school, you're going to play right away. As a freshman, you're going to get pretty good parts, and as a sophomore, you're going to have all the best stuff. We have a lot of non-majors uh, involved, and they can play in ensembles, they can take lessons, they can take music classes. They really could do all the music major things. There are no barriers to that. We have great equipment, we have great facilities. It's a lot of fun to be here. There's a lot of energy, and we do a lot of performing, which makes everybody kind of energetic and, and working towards those goals together, and it's, it makes it a lot of fun. If you have a passion for cooking, then sharpen your culinary talents with a degree in hospitality management from Onondaga Community College. You'll take courses in our new state-of-the-art kitchen that prepare you to be creative and enhance your culinary skills while learning how to take charge of a professional kitchen. Apply now at sunyocc.edu to start your career in hospitality. We offer a variety of experiences and the idea is that you're still learning to play your instrument, but you're learning to express it in different formats. We have a lot of opportunities for students to play and learn about different ways to use their instrument to make music. We have a variety of concerts and events. We bring in alumni, but also our students perform 
and they get to have those experiences. And it really is a chance to shine quickly. What I like about the dorms is how social it is and the community that's built around it and how we all come together to share thoughts and ideas. Even when you think you're alone, you're not really alone because you're always going to live with somebody and they're always going to want to speak to you. And there's always a person waiting to make a new friend. I met my friends through some common hobbies we all share, like playing video games. So I met a lot of cool people that way and I enjoy the company of my friends. I really enjoy the potential to work closer with students. Um, oftentimes, uh, we're fortunate enough to have small classes. Typically, we do a lot of class discussions, we do a lot of exercises, with student writing. Um, I try to get the students to interact with each other, but I think there's a pretty good balance between the students working on the writing and sharing thoughts about writing. Yeah, I think OCC is a strong consideration for any student. Hello, and welcome back to On TV Updates. I'm your sports anchor, Dallas Thomas. Sometimes when people gain success, they forget about others who helped them get there. Now I'll introduce you to former OCC lacrosse player, Jake McNabb, who took his skill and now shares it with his community. Former OCC lacrosse player, Jake McNabb has a long history within the sport. Uh, I've been playing lacrosse since I was probably three years old. I played uh, box lacrosse back home in Canada. And then uh, I went on to go to a um, prep school for a year, played field lacrosse, and then that's when I eventually came over to the States to play college. Jacob McNabb explains how he transitioned from being an OCC player to a CNS coach. It's different. I think the biggest thing for me is probably the adrenaline I get from uh, from practicing and playing every day. You don't get it as much when you're coaching. Um, but uh, day to day, it's just kind of nice to get out here, have a stick in my hand, be able to be with the guys and, and try to help uh, improve their game, get them to the next level so they can go play college too. Midfielder Joe Firth gives Jake much deserved credit. He knows the game better than uh, most of our coaches. Him and Coach Wilbur are pretty much on the same level when it comes to uh, like knowledge of the game and stuff. I think uh, him coming from like the box, box across background helps a lot, uh, especially with the offensive guys. Joe believes Coach McNabb is more connected to the players than some would think. I guess just relate to us being like around the same age, you know. Um, he knows what we're going through because he went through it a couple years ago. Uh, you know, he jokes around with us here and there. So. Jake McNabb says North Cicero lacrosse is very similar to college lacrosse. Uh, here we just, same thing as OCC, we get up and down the field, we're always working, we don't have guys standing in the back of the line watching, you know what I mean? Everybody's always involved, we're always getting up and down the field, getting after each other, and uh, we compete every day. It's compete, we're always getting better, we're working with each other and against each other to get better, and that, that's, uh, that's kind of how we improve here, and that's how we go about things here and both up at, uh, on the hill at OCC. <laughs> The North Stars have a game tomorrow versus Lafayette at CNS High School. The game starts at 10 a.m. The NBA playoffs are only about a week away, and with the current standings, it looks like the first round will be very exciting. Most people are looking forward to the Oklahoma City Thunder versus the Golden State Warriors. Kevin Durant versus his old team would be a very big deal, and we all know how badly Russell Westbrook would love to take out his former teammate. Kevin Durant made what's known as arguably the weakest move in NBA history by joining a 73-win team and leaving Westbrook by himself. The Syracuse, the Syracuse Crunch is hosting a community event for the Victory for Vets organization tomorrow night at 7. They will be playing Rochester Americans at the War Memorial. Tickets are $20 a person, and a portion of the pro proceeds go to Victory for Vets. This organization's mission is to help servicemen and women get back into their community after their time served in the military. Tickets can be pre-ordered by contacting Heather Graham at 315-506-8304 or at the venue's ticket booth. So Kat, what are you looking forward to in this year's NBA playoffs? Well, I want to see if James Harden can dethrone the Warriors this year. He has been known to struggle in the playoffs. And Matt, what do you think? Well, I'm excited to see what comes out of the East since LeBron James left. It's pretty wide open. I give the Celtics and Sixers a good shot. Thanks, Dallas.
When we come back, we'll find out if we can grill or chill this weekend. But first, we'll take a look at the Learning Center and what they provide for, stu for the students to improve their academics as the semester goes along. You're watching On TV Update. Kappa is the Honor Society for two-year colleges. Well, I was first appointed by the president to be the Phi Theta Kappa advisor, and I think that I've stuck with it so long because I see that it really does make a difference in students' lives. Um, my role as a Phi Theta Kappa advisor gives me a unique opportunity to form close relationships with students and really see them grow. Come to OCC with an open mind, come here, work hard, and make it happen. passion for cooking, and sharpen your culinary challenge with a degree in hospitality management from Onondaga Community College. You'll take courses in our new state-of-the-art kitchen that prepare you to be creative and enhance your culinary skills while learning how to take charge of a professional kitchen. Apply now at sunyocc.edu to start your career in hospitality. A smallish community small campus. It's nice to be able to walk everywhere. The college has tons of opportunities for help and assistance in your classes. It's, it's great. My OAR advisor, Office of Accessibility Resources, the people there are always there to help you. They always ask, you know, how my day was so far and all that. They're, they're really nice and helpful there. If you talk to them, they will do something for you if they can. Living on campus is a lot more convenient than living at home because everything I do is on campus so I can just easily go to places I need, whether it be advising, whether it be getting tutored, and everything's just like within just slight reach. You get a lot of help here. All of the professors I've ever had have been really, really great, really involved, and guide you in the right direction on what you want to do. And it also just lets me get into the whole community aspect of college. That's really important. Because we're a two-year school, you're going to play right away. As a freshman, you're going to get pretty good parts, and as a sophomore, you're going to have all the best stuff. We have a lot of non-majors uh, involved, and they can play in ensembles, they can take lessons, they can take music classes. They really could do all the music major things. There are no barriers to that. We have great equipment, we have great facilities. It's a lot of fun to be here. There's a lot of energy, and we do a lot of performing, which makes everybody kind of energetic and, and working towards those goals together, and it's, it makes it a lot of fun. Welcome back to On TV Update. I'm Matthew Georgiadis. And I'm Catherine Samara. Although the semester is coming to an end, it's never too late to check out the Learning Center. Whether you're a straight-A student or struggling, they're happy to help. Nina Verity takes a look at the services they provide for their students on campus. Struggling with a course or testing can put a damper on a student's mood as well as their GPA. The Learning Center works round the clock to make sure OCC students are getting the help they need. Someone asked me one day, write down what you do day to day. I don't have a, I don't have a black and white schedule. I don't have a black and white, I do this, this, and this. It's, it's a very fluid operation, I would say. The Learning Center provides a quiet space like this for students to study in, as well as material for their subjects. Open 144 hours a week, including the weekends, the Learning Center provides traditional one-on-one -on -one tutoring, workshops, and study groups for the high-demand courses at OCC. I think it's good. I think it's necessary. I think it's good to have a place where you, um, you can just go and get extra help. Um, you don't feel bad for not knowing things. It doesn't feel like you're penalized for not, not understanding things because you can all you can just come here and they'll run it through they run it through with you the best they can but I enjoy working with students because I don't know if I could work in a different office where I don't interact with students being on the campus tours are five percent of the puzzle it's the students got to make up the other part of it on OCC campus Nina Verdi on TV update the learning center is open Monday to, to Thursday 9 to 8 Friday 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 6. For more information on tutoring help, you can find the Learning Center in Gordon 202 behind the cafeteria or call 315-498-2103. It's that time of year again. The 14th annual Salt City Horror Fest is a week away. 
The Horror Movie Marathon Festival takes place on April 13th at the Palace Theater. This year, they will be showing famous horror movies like Jaws and The Thing, along with many other cult movies. They will be featured in their original 35mm format. Doors open at 10.30 a.m. and tickets are available at saltcityhorrorfest.com. Ezra Bale is back now with the weekend weather forecast. Ezra, how's it look? Well, you know, for today we've got this snow and rain mix with a high of 43 and a low of 40. But tomorrow things are going to start warming up and clearing up with a high of 57 and a low of 34 under mostly cloudy skies. Finally, on Sunday, we'll have a high of 65 and a low of 50. More mild conditions at that point with some partly cloudy skies. That's all the time we have for today. Join us next Friday at 11 and 2.30. From all of us here at On TV Update, thank you for watching and enjoy your weekend.